Nothing like being in his presence. Turn your Bible, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And um, we're going to continue uh, on. You know, the Bible says that uh, the Lord dwells in the praises of his people. That he, uh, he literally, it makes an abode for him. When we praise him, it's like it, it creates a habitation for him. And he comes, and he's always, you know, even when you're just, uh, no matter where you are, he's everywhere all the time. But he's not manifested to the same degree everywhere all the time. It's interesting, isn't it? But he will manifest himself when we begin to praise him. You, he, he'll actually come and visit you and dwell in and live in your praises. Wow. And then when you get in his presence, just all kinds of things happen. Your mind, your mind starts changing and your body starts getting in line and uh, all kinds of things happen in his presence. It's absolutely amazing. The Bible says times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. All right. Let's do what we're supposed to be doing here. First Corinthians 3. Six, uh, the Apostle Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now he's talking about teaching the word, and he's calling it planting a seed. So when I'm teaching right now, I'm planting something in you. And if you keep watering that seed, it's going to start growing up on the inside of you, and it's going to start changing things in your life. So he said, I planted, Apollos watered. What, was it, what does that mean? Apollos w went on and was teaching the same thing, but it's watering the seed. So just like we have a, a, a sprinkler system in our yard, we planted seed and it's got, we've got good soil and we got sun every day. But you got to have water all the time and you got to keep watering it. And if you don't keep watering it, it's not going to keep living. Well, the same thing is true with the word. You got to keep watering. That's what he's talking about. You got to keep watering. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing. So you have to hear and you have to hear. So if you need uh, uh, he healing, for instance, in your body, then you need to hear word on healing. Pastor Ray, when are you going to preach on Revelation you know, th the three frogs in Revelation is not going to help you. We might get to that sometime for fun. But we're trying to get through the week here. You need healing in your body. You need provision. You need peace of mind. You need your family restored. That's what we're talking about right now. He said, I planted Apollos water, but God... Gave the increase. So, so uh, don't miss the impact of this verse. God gives the increase. You know, when, when you pray and get a miracle as amazing as prayer is, we don't give the glory to the prayer. Amen. Uh, uh, when the answer comes, it's not, it's not just the prayer. I mean, you know, whoo, boy, did we pray. I mean, we grabbed a hold of that thing and we prayed it through. Yeah, but you didn't make it happen. Now, it wouldn't have happened if you didn't pray. But God made it happen. Amen. So even, even with all the praying and how much time we spent and how we got after it, we didn't do it. What does this verse say? But God gave the increase. Everybody say that. But God gave the increase, and so he gets the glory. Verse 7, so then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters. In other words, we're just vessels. But it's God who gives the increase. It says it two times in two verses, so you'll get it. But God who gives the increase. So we are doing our part of, of planting and tending and watering uh, I, and I like how the Amplified Classic says it in verse 6. But all the while, God was making it grow, and he gave the increase. And I'll even add this to it. Even when you saw nothing, 
because it was a seed underground germinating and sprouting roots. You didn't see it till it pops up out of the dirt. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. But he's there the whole time. Amen. There was a whole lot going on before that thing ever popped up out of the dirt. God was working the whole time. You saw nothing. Wow. Because it was down inside the ground. That's why we, we use this phrase all the time. Keep the switch of faith turned on. No matter what you see or don't see. Because God is increasing it, even in the unseen realm, until it pops up into the seen realm. There's a whole lot happening before it ever pops up. So you have to keep the switch of faith turned on. Amen. So God's way is seed time and harvest. That's his way. That's how he, he, he does everything through seed time and harvest. There was a time when there were only two people on the planet. And now there are billions. You know why? Seed time and harvest. He's a God of increase a a after the flood. And you know, and he started, God started over with Noah. Uh, there were two of each animal. There were, there was some of them. There were more than that because they brought him for sacrifices, but for reproduction, there were two of each animal. And now there are billions and trillions of animals, Fif 50 billion birds. Well, that's more than enough birds. 3.5 trillion fish. If we all ate fish every day, three times a day, we would still be too many fish. So we couldn't get to all of them. Why? The law of seed time and harvest. It's his way. He's the God of increase. So the miracle of the blessing is in the multiplication of the seed. We don't, we don't think anything of it because we're used to it. You know, we even learn about it in grade school. We take little seeds and we, you know, plant them in a little styrofoam cup. And we, uh, it, we don't think anything of it. We take it for granted. When you have lunch today, you ought to thank him. Because you're eating because of seed time and harvest. And he multiplied it. The hamburger, seed time and harvest. Cows. Tomato. See, time and harvest, plant, hamburger bun, wheat, grains. Although I got to tell you, I have this low carb bread. I don't know what on earth they make it out of, but <laughs> it's not, it's not bad if you can't have any bread, but I'm not sure that came from any plant. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it might have just come straight from the laboratory. I'm not sure. I mean, what could it be? There's no weed in it. There's no grain in it. But anyway. Ketchup, plant, tomatoes, sugar cane, French fries from the ground, animal style. Yes. It's got tomatoes. I looked up the ingredients. Tomatoes, relish, that's cucumbers, and sugar. Sugar cane is definitely in it. Mayo, that's soybean oil, eggs, lemon, sugar again. Half an, a, a, a vanilla, half chocolate, half vanilla shake. That's the best one they have. <laughs> Cows, more sugar. In and out should give me a commission because I have planted a seed <laughs> in your mind. But it's God who gives the increase. Now, Galatians 6. Galatians 6 and verse 7, <laughs> do not be, de be, be deceived. So there's a warning here. Everybody say a warning. warning. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. Uh, the NLT says you will always harvest what you plant. The, the uh, uh, CEV says you cannot fool God, so don't make a fool of yourself. You will harvest what you plant. Good news says you will reap exactly what you plant. Wow. So we, what does that mean? We don't sow tomatoes and reap apples. Any area of your life, 
where you might be deficient, the first place I would look is where I'm sowing. And that's the point of the title and the message today. So it's not just vegetable seeds that this applies to. It's not even just human or animal reproductive seeds that we're talking about. It's everything. Everything is a seed. How you treat people is a seed. How you treat people when you drive <laughs> is a seed. I said, first service, God help us. We're not going to have room in the altar for all the sinners that are coming to repent. <laughs> Here, here's a question. When you drive, are you kind? Do you let other people in when they're in the long, wrong lane? Getting quiet in this Lutheran conference. So. <laughs> You're not getting in front of me. You had just as long to merge as I did. You saw the sign when I saw it. Seriously, let people in. Quit being so ugly and selfish. You can change, you know. You can change that. I've always been like this. I know you have. That's why God sent you here. You can change. I mean, like that. You can change it. Well, now that's not a seed. The Bible says, if you say that's not a seed, you're a God mocker. <laughs> I didn't say it. As a matter of fact, when he mentions sowing and reaping here, he doesn't even mention trees or vegetables. He mentions exactly what I'm talking about right now, how you act. Verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows. That he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows in the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So you, when you say sow in the flesh, that's what we would might say getting in the flesh. The word everlasting life, it's not just talking about heaven. It means, it actually means past, present, and future. Life is the word zoe. It's the God kind and quality of life here now on the earth. That's what it's referring to. So you sow kindness and generosity, then that's what you're going to reap. Seems like it'd be hard to be kind all the time, you know. When I drive, I should let people in. Well, he knew you'd feel that way. That's why he put the next verse here. <laughs> verse 9, and let us not grow weary <laughs> while doing good. And he's talking about being kind to people. Don't get, don't get tired of it. For in due season, you'll also reap it if you don't, fa if you don't lose heart. The good news says, don't give up. Uh, uh, the, the CEV says, don't get tired of helping others. Wow. And he makes it plain. Uh, uh, th this is talking about how you walk out your everyday life with others in the next verse. Verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Be kind and generous to everyone. He said it's a seed. And if you, if you don't think it's a seed, you're a God mocker. He said it's a seed. And you'll reap whatever you sow. So you want to have some good seed in the ground. Yeah. Wow. It's a seed. You're going to reap it. Good or bad, you're going to reap it. So you want it to be good. You want words, your words to be sweet. Because you're going to end up eating those words. And you don't want to be, have ugly, ucky words coming back your way. So this is a law that's set in the earth, and it works every time. It really is a law. It's just like, it, it, just like the law of gravity. The law of gravity is a law. Not one time will you go up on this building and jump off and float down like a feather. You're coming down fast and hard. I guarantee it every time. Why? Because the law of gravity works every time. It's a law. Now, look at Genesis 8 and verse 22. 
It's an interesting thought, isn't it? About this seed time and harvest, how it works in every area. Verse 22 of Genesis 8, while the earth remains, as long as there's an earth, that's your whole life, as long as you're alive and on the earth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. While the earth remains, these things shall not cease. The first one listed, seed time and harvest. And, and we just read in Galatians, that affects everything, even our relationships with other people. So this, this law is established by God on earth as long as the earth exists. You don't have to worry about the ice caps melting. In 2009, Al Gore said at the Copenhagen Climate Conference that most of the ice caps would melt and disappear by 2013. Well, I don't know where Al Gore is today, but I know where the ice caps are. Because I saw some of them not long ago. I flew over Greenland, and I took pictures of them, and they're still there. Summer and winter will not cease. Climate people will tell you, but it's not true. I believe the Bible over any of them. Summer and winter will not cease. Heat and cold will not cease. Day and night will not cease. What else will not cease? Seed time and harvest. Uh, there's always going to be temperature changes. There always has been. There's going to be things happening and, you know, uh, they might be melting, you know, a, a little bit every year, every 10 years, but not because you drive an SUV or use a gas stove. How arrogant and ignorant would you have to be to think that you control the atmosphere of the planet? Everything down here as we know it it's coming to an end. That you can be sure of. Some of it may end before we leave. Don't worry about it. You're not in control of it. But you can rest assured God's got you. You know, uh, Job thought he knew some stuff one time. I don't, I don't want you to turn. I want you just to pay attention. I want you to listen. I'm going to read out of Job 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. First of all, if God starts talking you out of whirlwind, you should be scared. <laughs> and he said, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare to me if you have a no understanding. Who determined the measures of the earth if you know? Or who stretched out the measuring upon it? Upon what were the foundations of it fastened? And who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with the doors uh, when it broke forth and issued out of the womb? When I made the clouds the garment of it and thick darkness a swaddling band for it. When I said this far, you may come, but no farther. And here your proud waves must stop. Have you commanded the morning... <laughs> Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place that it might take a hold of the end of the earth? Have you entered the springs of the sea or have you walked in search of the depths? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Have you entered the treasury of snow? Or have you seen the treasury of the hail? By what, by what way is light diffused? Or the east wind scattered over the earth? Who has divided a channel for the overflowing water? Or a path for a thunderbolt to cause it to rain on a land where there is no one? A wilderness in which there is no man to satisfy the desolate waste 
and cause to spring forth the growth of tender grass. Has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice and the frost of a heaven? Who gives it birth? The waters harden like stone and the surface of the deep is frozen. Mm. For, from whose womb comes the ice and the frost of heaven? Who gives birth to it? Not Al Gore. He's easy to pick on, isn't he? He's kind of fun to pick on. But uh, we'll just say this, not anybody down here. As long as we need ice caps, we'll have ice caps. Don't you lose any sleep over at Greta. You have nothing to do with the atmosphere. Now look at what Paul said. Go over, if you would, to uh, 2 Corinthians. And we're going to look at what Paul said to the church at Corinth. All of chapters 8 and 9 are about giving offerings. That's what chapters 8 and 9 are all about. Talks about a grace. He's, he said there's a grace. Uh, God is able to make all grace abound to, uh, toward you. And he tells what it is, this gracious work of almsgiving. He calls giving and sowing natural seed or money or giving. He calls it a grace. Well, what is a grace? It's a supernatural enablement or a supernatural empowerment that comes on you to do something. All of chapter 8 and 9 is talking about giving. And it's written during a recession, and Paul is getting their eyes off of their trouble and on God. And he starts talking to them about giving and receiving, sowing and reaping. This is all so good, but I'm going to start in verse uh, 6 of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessing may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessing. Well, that's pretty easy to understand, isn't it? Talking about giving and receiving. Let each one give. What that's saying is you measure out in teaspoons, you're going to reap in teaspoons. You measure out in wheelbarrows, you're going to reap in wheelbarrows. That's what the Bible says. Verse 7. Let each one give as he is made up in his own mind and purposed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. Now, uh, let each one give as he's made up or purposed in his own heart. That's talking about giving a seed. Now that really isn't even talking about tithes. Because we know what the Bible says about a tithe. It's the first tenth portion. The first rule of prosperity, separate your money from God's money. The first portion, you're not even given. That was never yours. That, belo that belongs to the Lord, that first portion. Let each one give as he's made up. This is talking about above that. This is talking about giving something, giving an offering or giving something. As he's purposed in his own heart, not reluctantly, sorrowfully, or under compulsion. In other words, don't let somebody pull on your heartstrings. You know, sometimes people come tell you a sad, you know, sad story and they're, they're really just trying to pull in heartstrings so you'll do something. Well, when we're receiving an offering, even for the dream center or for an orphanage or something like that, we just tell you what it is. You want to get involved with it? Great. You know, but don't let someone manipulate you into giving. That's what this is talking about. A lot of people do that and it's wrong. He says, let each one give as he's made up in his own mind and purposed in his own heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. Why? For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. And God is able to make all grace. And he says, he List in the Amplified what this grace is. Every favor and earthly blessing. That's not talking about, you know, warm and fuzzy feelings. Earthly blessing. That means things on the earth. You, you, you don't have to figure out your own interpretation. God is able to make all grace. What grace? Every favor and earthly blessing. 
come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances this is his plan for you whatever the need that you would be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation at ver jump to verse 10 and God who provides seed for the sower and bread for the eater will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness and then it lifts it which manifests itself in active goodness kindness and charity or giving that's how it manifests uh, that word provide means furnish but the second word provide where it says provide and multiply that is the word uh, that where we get our word choreograph or choreography now choreography is totally different than freestyle if you've ever seen uh, like a, a Michael Jackson video where everybody's doing everything precisely exactly at the same time. I mean, there's a hundred people on stage and all of a sudden everybody goes, and you're like, ooh, that's powerful. I mean, everybody's doing exactly the same way all at the same time. It looks so cool. Or a ballet or a Broadway show. Choreography is very exact. It's planned and it's precise. That's what it means. And this says, God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you. And let's jump to verse 10. God who provides, furnishes seed for the sower and bread for the eater will also choreograph and multiply your resources. What does that mean? Right place, right time? Exactly where, where it's supposed to be? Exactly what you need? planned it was planned set up it's a setup god has a setup to bless you so so this uh, uh paul's talking about here this isn't just uh, tomatoes and lemons this isn't even sowing kindness and friendship what we talked about this is things and money so it's everything it's a law that he established in the earth and it works in every area as long as the earth remains. Wow. Well, nobody, uh, nobody will be my friend. I would, I would check up first thing, what kind of friend am I being? You want people to be loyal to you? So loyalty. In any area before just talking about what you don't have, think about your sowing in that area. You know? I, you know what? I need to be that. That should be your first impulse in response. And if you sow it, God is not mocked. Whatever a person sows, they will also reap. You know, you, you hear that a lot in a bad connotation. Ooh, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow. And I'd say, cool. Because <laughs> I've been sowing some good stuff. But if you haven't been, you might be a little scared. Now, Psalm 115, almost finished. Psalm 115, verse 12. The Lord uh, has been mindful of us. He's got you on his mind. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He'll bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who revere and worship him, both small and great. That's everybody. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Wow, this is astounding. He's got you on his mind. The creator, we, we just read about it in Job. The creator of the universe. He knows things about you that you don't even know. He knows the exact current count of the hairs on your head and how many came out in the shower this morning. You don't even know. He cares more about you than you do. He's got you on the Lord's been mindful of us. He's he's got you on his mind. What, what what's on his mind? He tells us right here, blessing. Blessing. His plan is always increase. His plan is always he said that you would increase more and more. Increase everything good that you would have increase more revelation, that you would have more light, more faith more strength we would have more souls more more people saved and filled more people helped amen more healing 
Verse 15, may you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Wow. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth, he's given to the children of men. He gave us a planet. <laughs> and Genesis 126, then God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and he created him many genders because he was very confused. No, he, male and female, he created them. Anything else that anybody else came up with had nothing to do with God. He created two. Whew, the word's good. Then, then what happened? Then God blessed them. How'd he do that? God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that lives on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed. Everybody say seed. Which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed. Everybody say seed. To you it shall be for food. It is the law of seed time and harvest. Everything on earth is subject to it. He said, be blessed, be fruitful, multiply, fill, subdue, take dominion. Seed time and a harvest, it crosses both realms. It's natural realm and spiritual realm. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I pray if there's anyone in here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, they wouldn't walk out these doors without making a decision for you. And I ask you for that. In Jesus' name, just for a moment while every head's bowed, if you're in here and you've never received Jesus, you've never met the Lord, you've never been uh, born again, those are all terms that we get from the Bible, but this is what they all boil down to. If you can't lay down to sleep at night and know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you were to die in your sleep tonight, if you don't know, for sure that heaven's your home. You can know that before you walk out these doors. This is not a hope, so salvation. We know, the Bible says, we know that we've passed from spiritual death to spiritual life. But if you don't know, that's the first invitation. The second invitation is this. If uh, maybe you have served God, but you've kind of been going your own way, doing your own thing, and you want to rededicate your life or make a, a new commitment to him today. And the third invitation is this, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, it's the most powerful thing that will happen to you in this life. And let me just say that uh, we have altars up here in front. We have prayers. We have, uh, 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 I mean, they are prayer warriors. They know how to pray heaven and earth together. And they'll be up here after the service. And you can always come here for prayer for anything after a service, but especially if you pray any of these prayers. Uh, uh, there might be some also that are uh, joining us Online, We want you to pray with us. We're all going to pray a prayer together here in just a moment. But this is just for me so I can see you, just so I can pray for you uh, personally. If that's, uh, if that's anyone, you say, you know what, I don't know for sure, but I want to know. Or I want to rededicate my life. Slip your hand up real quick so I can see it before we all. I see that. You can put it down. I see that. You can put it down. I see that. You can put it down. Anybody else before we all pray together? Anyone else before we all pray together? All right. And there might be some that you felt tugged to lift your hand, but you just didn't do it. Just join us right now. Let's all do it. Lift one hand toward heaven. That's where your help comes from. It's just a sign of surrender. Say this after me and mean it with your heart. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me with your precious blood and make me whole. I'll follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.